In this video, I'm going to be going over five common mistakes every cyclist must avoid. What's up guys, Chad here with ThatBikeLife.com. i chilling here with my uh, Cirella S3. This is my road bike. got the Zip 303 wheels. Uh, very, very good wheels. Very good bike. Would recommend it. Uh, very, really much enjoy it. Uh, but anyways, I want to go over five common mistakes that cyclists actually make, okay? Uh, I've been racing for the past five years and I've just... I've been able to take in a lot of you know mistakes, and I've been able to see a lot of things uh, people do wrong, including myself. So I've been able to learn from my mistakes, and I want you guys to do the same thing. You know, there's a saying: a smart person learns from their own mistakes, but a wise person learns from others' mistakes. So go ahead and learn from my mistakes and others' mistakes, so you don't avoid them too. Okay. So the first mistake cyclists make is um, not eating enough food or water during, when they're riding. Okay. So what I do is if, if I'm doing anything more than an hour, I make sure you you have to eat food while you ride. Okay. It's so important, especially if you're training for a race or an event. Um, it's really important to make sure you fill yourself, I'd say at least 100 calories every hour that you're riding. So if you do a three hour ride, you want to consume at least 300 calories uh, to keep your body maintained, fuel, and get enough energy in it, okay? Otherwise, you're going to experience bonking or a lack of energy on the bike, okay? So that's the first one is really just overeating and not drinking enough. Also drinking, that's the same thing, okay? Drinking water or um, if you want to use different products, like I use uh, this Goo Energy Mix, pretty good. Uh, but what, what you want to do is you want to drink at least one bottle of water every hour again. So I just go by that hourly rule. Um, again, like if it, like yesterday I did a recovery ride, just like 20 miles. Um, I, I only drank like half the bottle. I didn't eat any food. So like easy rides like that usually don't need food. But if you're going out on three hour endurance rides on the weekends or even two hours, I'd really consider, you know, just uh, taking a goo or some shot blocks or something like that, just making yourself eat, even if you don't want to eat, because I had a problem with that when I was racing, is I never wanted to eat, but you just have to make yourself eat, get, get your favorite cycling food and just make yourself eat it, whether you have to stop or just, you know, practice riding during the bike, that's something, a huge mistake that I've made and I've seen other people make, okay? So, common mistake number two, okay? So number two is going out too hard, okay? This is a big mistake a lot of people make, is whether you're in a race or just a train ride or even an event, okay? A lot of people, what they do is they try to show off, you know, they try to show off for the group, they try to show off for the race, and they try to go out too hard, okay? Consistency wins the race, okay? Okay, cycling is all about consistency. How, how, how long you can maintain that energy throughout the race, ride, or event, whatever you're doing, it doesn't really matter, but you want to be able to maintain that same pace, okay? So a lot of people, they go out, you know, like I'll go, I'll go on like a Sunday group ride, it'll be like, let's say a 50 mile ride, okay? Because like a lot of people, every week, they're the same people that show up, so I know their fitness level, and the first 10, 20 miles, they're going out as hard as they can, and I just know I'm chilling in the, you know, I'm chilling behind them on their wheel, just, you know, not doing any pulls, not doing any, you know, sprints up hills randomly. I'm just kind of chilling there and waiting for them to kind of die down. And then the last 20 miles, that's where you want to really work your hardest, okay? So really be, try to be conservative your first half ride, okay? That's where you really want to warm up, get things going. It takes, like me, the longer the warm up, the better, okay? If I can warm up for an hour long, uh, that's usually good for me, okay? So. That's really what you want to do is just not go out too hard. I know it's fun to, you know, just race people, but do that at the end. That's where it's really fun because not only are you going to have more energy, but you're also going to be, your body's going to work better, okay? You're going to be able to recover better. You're, you're not going to get, you're more, you're less likely to get injured, okay? So just keep that in mind. Just don't go out too hard, okay? So that's mistake number two. All right, mistake number three is overtraining. So this is a big mistake that I've kind of make. I make sometimes just overtraining, basically meaning you know you're trying to do too much. Okay, you're trying to get to that next level of fitness when in reality you just have to have more patience and do some of the things you don't want to do, whether that's recovery or um, you know core workouts. Other you know maybe you're doing some running, cross training, um, stuff like that, keeping your core muscle strong. Uh, that's another mistake I'll get to in just a minute. But overtraining is something you know you don't want to do because you can get, you're likely to get injured. Um, you're you know you can uh, peak too fast or peak too hard. So just don't overtrain. Um, really focus on quant or quality, not quantity. Okay. Um, you know I know people that ride you know 300, 400 miles a week, 
but they're not doing any quality rides. Okay, sure, they're doing some long endurance rides, and but they're not doing any quality um, intervals or workouts that's really getting their heart going to that 180, 190 level or their lactic threshold level. They're just going at that same pace. And when you're just doing that, you're not going to progress anymore. Okay, sure, you're going to get better endurance if that's what you're training for, then that's fine. But I see, like, if you want to bring your fitness up, you have to have quality rides, okay? Quality where you're doing intervals, getting your heart rate as hard as it can go, you know, going, resting, going, resting, okay? That kind of stuff, or just doing like an hour race ride, okay? I'm sure there's a local group where you guys can go out and just, you know, go as hard as you can for an hour or so. Um, so that, those kind of rides really, those make the big difference in cycling, okay? Just so, just remember that. So again, just don't overtrain. If you're doing one of those rides, the next day, take a rest day or take a recovery day, go out easy, and then, you know, do your endurance rides on the weekends or whatever you want, okay? Just don't try to do them every day and just don't try to overtrain, okay? More miles doesn't mean more fitness. Um, and that's a lot of, that's a big mistake a lot of people make that I've noticed, okay? So that's mistake number three. Mistake number four is not getting fitted properly on the bike, okay? So the reason you wanna get fitted properly, uh, meaning you know your seat is adjusted the right height, your pedaling, um, everything like that is all good. Um, you know, you can get professionally fitted or just kind of look up on YouTube how to do it. I'm sure you can find, I got professionally fitted, it was like $250. And honestly, I think it's worth it because uh, before I was experiencing knee pain, and ever since I got fitted, I wasn't experiencing any knee pain or anything like that. Or if you have back pain, um, you know, this is another crucial level where your seat is if it's moved too far forward or too far front. Same thing with your bars, if they're up enough or if your stem's too long or too short. So that's all things crucial. If you're having any sort of back pain, and back pain is normal no matter what, like if you're just going hard, if you do it for a ride. So, uh, but if you're having back pain after an hour or 30 minutes and or it just feels uncomfortable, Consider getting professionally fitted because it's something that really helps and it's important for your body and you know not only just your back but also your knees. Okay, if your knees are at the wrong level, you don't want to end up you know with bad knees um, just because you know you didn't pay for getting fitted or you didn't take the time to get fitted. Okay, so that's another thing I see with people is um, you know they maybe they get a new bike and they just want to ride it and they don't you know want to take the time or spend the money to get fitted. Um, honestly, I think it's an important thing in cycling and something a lot of um, you know people that race do and it's important because not only do you feel more comfortable on the bike, which is a huge crucial factor to racing and training, but also you'll be more efficient, okay? You'll you'll be able to produce more power because you're you're they're gonna make you pedal more uh, efficiently by being in that right uh, position level. So just remember that. So that's mistake number four is not getting uh, fitted properly. And mistake number five, the last mistake cyclist makes, um, is not doing core work workouts, okay? So what do I mean by that? I mean push-ups, sit-ups, okay, leg lifts, um, jumping jacks, okay? Just doing some core, maybe some light running, okay? So all that stuff, maybe some leg lifts, maybe some workouts, you know? Um, so just all that stuff is really important when you're on the bike. You, know, you don't want to just ride the bike, okay? Just riding the bike is going to get your other muscles weak. You want to be able to support, um, you know, your back muscles need to be able to support you, okay? Your, your arm muscles need to be a bit, uh, Your arm muscles need to be able to support you. Your abs need to be able to support you, okay? Getting that cross training is, it's going to make you feel like strong on the bike, like fit, okay? When you feel fit, uh, you feel a lot better, okay? So uh, that's a huge thing. Obviously, riding is very important for training, but not, a lot of people just ride and they don't do any core workouts. So um, even if it's 15 minutes, 10 minutes long, as long as you do them like two to three times a week, you're gonna notice an increase, okay? It might not be the first week, but a month two or three, you're gonna notice a huge difference in your riding capabilities just from doing those core workouts, you know, 30 minutes a week, um, you know, doing maybe three workouts, 10 minutes each day, okay, um, in a week period, okay? So just doing that, you're gonna notice a huge difference in your cycling, you know, capabilities and um, just how you feel overall on the bike. You're gonna feel more fit, you're gonna feel stronger, your back's not gonna hurt as much, and uh, overall, that's just a huge um, role when it comes to training and cycling is just feeling good on the bike, okay? 
So just remember that. So those are the five mistakes, you know, not, not eating enough, not drinking enough, um, overtraining, not doing core workouts and not getting fitted. Those are the five mistakes. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, be sure to smash that like. Also be sure to subscribe and leave any comments or questions you have in the comment box. That's what it's for. I'll see you guys in the next video. Peace out guys.